Hello YouTube, this is Freno. Today I will show you a server-friendly copper farm. What's that you ask? Of course it works on a server and the base design is from ENX04, but it has two rather interesting properties. On one hand, we can control the lag and slow it down if many players are online. On the other hand, it has an auto start feature. You don't need to move zombies in there to start the farm up. And if the farm dies down due to server lag, which can unfortunately happen sometimes, it will automatically restart even while you are still AFK. You have to do nothing. Of course it's infinitely afk -able with a regeneration beacon and a shulker box loader for the copper and it's fairly easy to build by giving good rates. This one I built here gives up to two shulker boxes copper per hour and it took me just over two hours to build it in vanilla survival after material collection of course. This video is an update as I have built a similar farm before. The old video already included the lag control but not the auto restart and of course I streamlined the farm in quite a few places in this new video. So about copper. The introduction was a blast, as it's a very nice building block that fits into a lot of build pellets. With Mo Young giving us copper from Drowned, we had a good news bad news situation. We could automatically farm copper, but it was terribly slow. As even with looting 3, we need to kill 6 Drowned on average for 1 copper ingot. And Drowned spawn rather slowly compared to other mobs. The water column in this trident farm has a footprint of about 25 by 40 and it's 150 blocks high and yet we can barely fill the mob cap and this farm will only give a couple of hundred ingots per hour, which is not very impressive. And unless we want to fill our whole server with bubble columns, there are essentially two possibilities to farm large amounts of copper. One, dig down all the way to bedrock or build a perimeter and use the much higher spawning rates near bedrock. or Simply build Enixo4's reinforcement based copper farm, which takes all of 10 minutes to build and gives a ton of copper. This is its original world download and if you have never seen a reinforcement based copper farm, then I suggest to pause the video here, watch Enixo4's video on his next generation copper farm and if you feel peckish, Gnemon's detailed explanation of reinforcement mechanics before you return. This video here assumes that you are familiar with the basics of reinforcement spawning and Ian farm mechanics and Ian explains them better than I ever could. Now Ian's farm has just one drawback. It uses all of the Valen computing capacity until the game starts lagging, which is perfectly fine if you play single player. Build Ian's farm and forget about copper for the rest of the game. But you are not alone in the server. This farm once it stabilizes at a bit over 50 MSPT creates over 3000 mobs. And of course that's a massive amount of lag. And even though the farm is self-throttling, that means the farm or your single player world will slow down once the server reaches its capacity. It does so slowly and running the farm will cause severe lag for other players if they suddenly require additional processing capacity. Which happens all the time by, for example, logging on, going to the meta, flying or god forbid running a redstone contraption. So yes, it could happen that you get kicked by an angry admin for lagging out the server <coughs> if you run this farm. Let's have a look at my solution in the world download, where I replaced most of the blocks with tinted glass so we can see what's going on. The design is of course heavily based on Ian's overworld sky farm. The drops are collected using a minecart yeeting setup, a filter and a shulker box loader here. The lag is controlled by the limited size of the farm and the option of lighting up areas. By limiting the size of the farm we also limit the amount of spawning spaces. Because a mob can only spawn if its hitbox doesn't intersect the hitbox of another mob. So if we have this row of zombies here coming in, nothing can spawn. Also since the mobs just have one path to the killing chamber, we can make sure that pretty much all of the collisions happen here, where we have ladders and no entity cramming, so the game doesn't have to calculate collisions. This farm tops out at about 700 mobs and it costs 12 to 13 MSPT to run, compared it to Ian's original world download where we saw over 3000 mobs when the game started lagging heavily. But we can further throttle the farm by lighting up parts and therefore reducing the spawning spaces. The player can just hit this lever there. It will activate this redstone lamp. And now half of this arm will be lit up and that means over here no more mobs can spawn. The same for the other arm. And here the math is very simple. The more mobs, the more lag, but also the higher the rates. We will have to surrender a bit of copper drops if we want to keep the other players on the server happy. 
The self restart is done by an additional spawning space on top of the farm and a couple of turtle eggs. If the farm is completely or nearly shut down, that means we are under the mob cap, we will get some spawns here and the zombies will be lured to this turtle egg here in the back and fall down this drop chute. And after a while they will spot another turtle egg that is hidden here, try to get to this turtle egg and end up in a killing chamber. At which time they are attacked by the player and now the reinforcement mechanics kicks in, that means on one hand they start spawning new zombies, on the other hand they will lure in all other zombies that have already spawned and are here. Here we have a block of water, so they don't get any fall damage when falling down. Here we have a magma block, so if we got chicken jockeys they will eventually be killed by the magma. And all of the other mobs are 32 or more blocks away from the player, so they are too far away to wander, they will just stand there and do nothing until they despawn. And we have a safety feature. We have lit up the spots nearest to the drop chute here, so all those nasty creepers will spawn a few blocks away and hopefully won't get pushed into the drop chutes by zombies. It can still happen that the creeper or skeleton falls in there, they are just pushed in by the zombies into the killing chamber and are killed. But best not to have too many of them in there. As the farm ramps up, the mob cap will be full and we won't see any other mobs spawn here, except for a few reinforcement zombies, because technically this area are legal spawning spaces for reinforcements. A few general remarks. The farm is directional, because the way reinforcements work is that they always spawn at the corner of a block, while normal blocks would spawn smack down in the middle of a block. So the chains here will block all spawns for normal mobs. We can't have natural spawns in there. But the reinforcements always spawn on the corner of the north or the west side. And this design with the chains comes from Gnemon. But you have to make sure that the channel where the mobs will walk is on the north or on the west side. So for the rest of the video we will have a look at the rates of these farms and I'll explain why we may need to restart this farm, so why it can happen on a server that this farm dies down. A farm with two arms produces about 3200 drops per hour or two shaker boxes, which is pretty good. And if we don't run the farm we have between 2 and 3 MSPT, so the farm requires about 12 additional MSPT. And MSPT of course stands for milliseconds per tick and the most a server can handle from all processes is 50 MSPT. And this is probably okay if you are on a small server where you are alone or few other players are on. However, with a few more players, of course your server may be a bit faster or a bit slower. So all these lag values could be a bit higher or lower depending on your hardware and the server hardware. So we can reduce the lag by throttling the farm and the lag reduction is roughly linear in the size of the area that we have lit up. So if you switch on one redstone lamp you will cut the rates by 25 to 30 percent. If you enable two you will cut the rates by 50 percent or a bit more. And after a while we see about the expected results. We have half of the production but only half of the lag. Of course this also works in the other direction. You can get more rates and more lag using a third or even a fourth arm of this farm. This farm gives around 4800 drops and on my computer between 20 and 25 MSPT. So this farm might be a bit heavy for a server, at least if you're not playing alone. In this design I also added a second filter. The second filter doesn't really come into play if you are in normal operation mode, but if you start culling you will generate a lot of copper in a short time. So you can just add a second filter that goes into the same Schleicher box loader, so you won't lose anything. So why can this amazing farm break down and stop? It's all got to do with lag. Without lag the number of zombies will grow slowly but exponentially until we run out of spawning spaces and we get more and more zombies. But if we have even a bit of lag then the number of zombies will shrink over time. Why is that? I don't want to get all mathy here, but I will give you the cliff notes. Don't worry, it will only take a minute. And if you really really hate maths, then just cover your ears or something for a minute. But keep watching, because in a moment I'll simulate what happens if server lag kicks in. And I'll speed up the game so you can simply watch what happens. Okay, so first, what happened when we had no lag? The zombies had their head in water and converted to drowned after exactly 45 seconds. With the auto clicker set to 2.25 seconds, we hit them each exactly 20 times before they converted to drowned. But we did less than 1 point damage each time. 
so they were still alive when they converted, even though one or two more hits would have killed them. But after converting, they were restored to full health and we could hit them about 20 times more before they died. That's a total of 42 hits, which is a very significant number. But each zombie has only a very, very low chance to call in reinforcement. Think that on average, maybe 10 zombies spawned 12 to 15 new zombies, depending on the local difficulties. It can be a bit more or a bit less. So we had steady growth, but slowly. But now we have just a bit of lag, so the server runs a bit slower. Perhaps the server is 20% overloaded. It takes 60 milliseconds for each tick instead of 50. Everything now takes 20% longer and it will take 54 seconds to convert a zombie to a drowned instead of 45. But the client auto clicker doesn't know that, so it will keep at the same pace and this means we hit each zombie at least 23 times and kill it and it never converts. But that means that we just spawn in half as many new zombies. Before we turned 10 zombies into 12 to 15 new ones, now we we'll get only 6 to 8 new zombies. And the number of zombies shrinks over time. And instead of exponential growth, we have exponential decay. Now if you play in single player, this all works out. If we get too many zombies and the game starts struggling, then the number of zombies reduces itself fully automatically until the game runs on schedule, then we get more zombies, the game starts struggling again, and so on and so on and so on. But on the server, the lag in multiplayer can come from many other sources. Other players, or the server computer runs a backup, or internet lag, or whatever. A single large bamboo farm can lag out the server terribly if it's running. And then the same process happens here. We get less and less zombies, but the lag does not go away, because this time it's not our farm that caused the lag. And if this goes on for a while, and we are unlucky and caught a moment of low local difficulty, then the worst case is that the farm completely dies down and we run out of zombies. And therefore it's very helpful to have this little kickstarter to jumpstart the farm if it died down. And once the external lag is gone, the farm will ramp up again. And all it takes to restart the farm is from time and time one or two zombies. Here the ability to restart the farm comes in very handy, because I built this farm in my industrial district. So if I'm in this farm producing copper, all of my other farms will run. However, if I'm done, I want to kill off the zombies, because a lot of them will pick up items, so we would have still a couple of hundred zombies in here. So I will just switch to the culling sword and run the farm just for a bit longer. And very soon, pretty much all of the zombies are dead. The rates in single player are always just a bit higher than on the server because you always have a bit of random delay in the internet connection. But this farm works at 80 to 85% capacity than in single player, so it gives me almost two shulker boxes of copper ingots per hour. Of course, here's the spawning sphere around the AFK spot. I built the farm rather high, not 128 blocks over the ground, because I've already lit up most of the ground and most of the caves there. But this makes sure that the only place where mobs can spawn naturally is our little Kickstarter platform, and not the ground. So this is a very nice little farm. Copper is a resource, of course, that you can mine, but I plan to use quite a lot of copper in my main base for this season. So it's good to have a source, and of course I can always sell excess copper in my shop. I'm pretty sure I will find some takers for it. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you want to see more content like this, and see you next time. Bye bye!